fourth down. Two yards plus. And they're going for it. Oh, they just don't try to throw a ball. They sat there for a good 30 seconds and eyeballed each other and nobody moved. <laughs> now in comes Garmin to do the punting. Garmin has punted only one time today. One time. Well, this is the first possession that Tennessee hasn't scored on in six. Six consecutive unanswered scores by the Tennessee Volunteers. A little bit different style of play than what we used to see at Tennessee with the old single wing. Gifford Urban is deep for UCLA. Block is old, Keith. Going after it. Best chance. Gets it out. And oh! How about that? When everything's going right, you just don't worry about it. Just ride the roll, and they have killed the ball inside the five. Down, literally. Well, they're going to mark it out a little bit from the goal line uh, out to about the three. But UCLA safety was, was somebody really hustled down there to get that ball out of the end zone, keep it from going in. Then the, about three of them, yeah, 25 is going to really, and he's close to the goal line there. The first man, I couldn't see his number. Yeah. Tennessee goal line, trailing by 16 points, 6.38 to play. And uh, David Norrie is in at quarterback. Throws to Terrell and Atlanta, Michigan, from Columbia. We'll have about 75,000 folks in Columbia next week. And they are wound up about their football team down there. Joe Morrison, he's turned that program around as fast and quick as anybody been in college football. Second down and ten from their three. Norrie out of his end zone. Goes down the middle with it, and the pass is too high. Gerard got a hand on it, could not be. Third and ten. Stop operating down there with 94,000 folks on it. Norrie lets it go. Sherrard in a foot race and a great catch by Sherrard. He had two people there and he pulled the ball down. Chris White and Victor Peppers were with him, but he just went higher. Sherrard is such a great receiver. Concentration. He just runs along at the last minute. At the proper time, he goes up and catches the ball. Peppers, number eight, just couldn't stay with him. And White is coming across, number seven. But Sherrod had that body control and came down with it. Five catches for Mike, 95 yards. First down, UCLA. Out of the shotgun now. Snapped from their own 48. Passed home to the sidelines and incomplete the penalty flag. And you may have interference. Moves the ball to the 25 where it's first down, UCLA. Gaston Green. And about four. Excellent pursuit by the Tennessee defense. Montreal defeats the New York Mets 5-1. Mets boot the ball four times. Palmer beats Fernandez. And St. Louis in the ninth over Chicago. So the Cardinals will pick up the game if they hold on to the win. I'm into the lead. Second down, six. Struggles to about the ground for UCLA and three yards for the first down. Gaston Green has the first down. And he's in some more. Has that speed, the balance, the power. Lose does it all as those numbers reflect. All at the end. Crowd is not helping Dave Norrie. Keeps it. Looks down in the end zone. Touchdown for UCLA to Al Wilson. They would have to go for two. Wilson, number 88, is 
will break all the way across the middle. And the defensive secondary leaves him alone. One's playing man. Another defensive back is playing zone. When you cross at the goal line, you give the defense a chance to make a mistake. If they make two, it'll be 26-18. And then if they can get the ball back and score and make two again. Making two successive two-point conversions. Odds are not good. In college for the season, for every 40%. He's got it. Busted defense by the Tennessee. Yes. They went to sleep on that corner, and Jeff Nowinski, the tight end, pulls in the two-point conversion pass, and that's what you've got now, an eight-point difference in the ball game. Look how wide open he is. Somebody really busted their side. They tackled the rod. He's got to play pass first. 4.46 to play in the game. And still a lot of time. Jim? All right, Keith, here's another story. In pregame, we brought you up to date on the recovery of Ed Reinhardt, the University of Colorado tight end who was injured a year ago, received a severe brain concussion, was in a coma for more than two months. Reinhardt was honored today in Ed Reinhardt Day ceremonies at Boulder and in the rematch between Colorado and Oregon, Oregon, the team against which Reinhardt was hurt a year ago in Eugene. Colorado scored an emotional victory, holding off the Ducks on a threat from the nine-yard line in the final minute of the game to win before Reinhardt and his family, 21 to 17. Keith? Hey, Jimmy, thank you. I'm glad that young man is coming around. He's gaining yes. a little bit every day. That defense stopped it. Well, it's right. still 446. I'd kick it I'd down kick if he needed it. Yep, trying to kick it over the end zone, start him over 20. Make deep pitch. Hey, uh, kick it high. It's not too deep. Goes back to McGee after six. He didn't get well, Keith, what he did, he afraid he might fumble the ball, and so he just puts his knee on the ground, no chance to fumble. And he's got it, and he's going to throw it. No, he's not. He's going to run it. And he dives across the 20 and gets out. They hand it off. Miller in there at fullback. They give it to Wilson. And Wilson's got the throw. Clock is old by UCLA. Joel Farmer snaps it. Good snap. Kick is away. Irvin at the 25. Down at the 27. Joel Farmer, the man who snapped it, the man who makes the tackle. It was a 40-yard punt by Garmin and a one-yard return. Now the Tennessee defense got to make up their mind. They don't want to play a prevent, but they don't want to give the easy touchdown either with Gerard, Connell, and Durrell, three great receivers. UCLA are forever dangerous. Dale Jones, the linebacker, trying to get the crowd into it, waving his arms and, come on, make some noise. 94, almost 95,000 of you. And out of the shotgun, Dave Norrie drops the throw. Dumps it off to Justin Green out of the backfield and he came out as he did today. Swamp Rats, an assistant coach up at 20. This time, uh, the ball is delivered to Gaston Green where he can catch it, and he does catch it for about eight yards, maybe seven. They marked him at the... They give it to Primus. And Primus is knocked out of bounds close. The chains are all the way across the field. Yeah. They're going to bring him across, I think, here. Oh, he makes the he's first pass. I, yeah. I think he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he does. Tennessee now has called, I thought they called a timeout, but I guess not. So they still have two. UCLA with one. Time remaining, one minute, 26 seconds. 26, eight. Now they're going under center. Rolls this one out. Gets the pressure. Sack him. He throws the ball. The pass is caught. How about that? The big guy from Portland, Oregon was on his way down and saw a man and threw the ball to Mike Sherrard and Sherrard made the catch close to him. Uh, wasted a little time. They're going to run it. Well, they're going to run it pretty well. Get out of bounds. That's Justin Green blows it over the left side and goes down to about the Tennessee 41 and gets out of bounds, killing the clock with 101 to play. Last week, 
it looked like it was impossible for UCLA to beat Brigham Young. They were trailing with two minutes to play. Got the ball on the old 18-yard line. They scored and won the game. Well, they played a 17-17 tie here one time in Knoxville to where I did it. Tennessee is not lined up properly. They have a hard time getting adjusted. Now they good shape. Norris still got it. He missed the handoff. Keith. And he's going to go out of bounds. Knocked out back around the 46. He had an all type of play called and just couldn't get to uh, Green on the handoff and had to keep it. Loss on the play from the 41 back to the 46. Back to the shotgun. Second down and 15. <laughs> Across the field, Sherrard got it, out of bounds. And was first a, down at the 27 of Tennessee. There's an old saying, threading the needle. And that's exactly what happens here. As Norrie throws the ball right in between the defenders, in front of one, behind the other, and inside of the third man. Three of them around, Sherrard, they get 49 seconds to play. First down, just inside the 27. Give it a green. To the 25. Two yards. Well, that, uh, that picture tells you everything you need to know. Except it is second down and eight. And the home crowd is getting all over UCLA here, making it as tough as possible. Now they force Corey into his hand signal. And out of the shotgun. Goes for the corner. Touchdown! Sherrod! Willie Anderson! Willie Anderson, 83, made the catch. Can you believe it? With 37 seconds to play. And here comes your two-point play for a tie. And here comes the two-point play for the tie. They give it to Gaston Green. He's in there. They run the ball and tie it up at 26, 26. There's not much you can say except give tremendous credit to that UCLA team for not giving up, putting forth the effort. They did it last week and they've done it again. And some the Bruin rooters are loud. And here's the kickoff by Bray. Kicks it deep. Why not the onside kick here? We, we have tough. a problem. Yeah. yeah. With Rivers in the range, and uh, Rivers would have the wind at his back. He would have the wind at his back. UCLA now is going to go into deep contain. But Georgia got burned on that deep prevent, didn't they? Yes, they did. We've seen some comebacks this year. No, they're not in that deep contain either. They're right up there. Now you got one man dropping deep, Washington. And Tony Robinson back to throw it. Gets away from one, pulls it down, takes off to the sidelines, and gets a first down. It's going to where they bought it. Depends on the mark. They hadn't stopped the clock yet. They're letting the clock run. No, not a first down. Well, they got the measure. I think they called it. Nope, but Tennessee took the timeout. Well, they got ran it all the way down to 18 seconds in range. Now, I don't frankly know what his range is. He's hit one from 49 today. And he hit that one from 49 into the wind. Now, you might give him a shot at a 55-yarder, and with the help of the wind, who won? Made everything pretty even in college. Anybody can win on any given day. Received by UCLA. Tennessee seemingly had it in hand. Robinson under pressure, gets it away, and so they played all game. Pass is caught, player tumbles out of bounds, that's Wilson out of the, out of the backfield, and stopped it. That stopped it, no it didn't stop it. Didn't stop it. Did he knock him out of bounds? Game's over. Like Game's over. He, they blew it down. He did not stop the clock as he went for the turf and 
the game is over. Sort of an anticlimactic way to end the ball game, perhaps. But UCLA down 26 to 10 in the fourth quarter comes storming back with two touchdowns and two successive point conversions to win it or to tie it 26 26. In Gainesville, it was 28 14 before Rutgers came back with 35 seconds to go. They got a touchdown pass from backup quarterback Joe Gagliardi to Bruce Campbell. Gagliardi then threw for the two point conversion. Rutgers recovered an onside kickoff on the ensuing kick, had a chance to get a field goal that would win the game, but they fumbled that away. So for the moment, with time running out, it is tied out at 28 apiece, and Florida's just fumbled the ball away. Maybe Rutgers will get one last second chance to win it. We'll pay attention. Auburn beat Southern Mississippi 29-18. Bo Jackson, career-high 30 carries, 205 yards, two TDs. Chuck Long had a good day as Iowa rolled over Drake 58 to nothing. Next week, they get another easy assignment with Northern Illinois. UCLA and Tennessee, as you saw, tied at 26. Tennessee led at 26 to 10, but time to strong performance by Tony Robinson. UCLA came back with David Norrie, the quarterback who was benched last week, and he led the comeback. Here is our Chevrolet play of the game for the day, and we're gonna give you two plays. This is the touchdown and the two-point conversion, which tied it with 30 seconds to go in the football game. First, Nori throwing the TD pass more than 30 yards to Willie Anderson behind the Tennessee secondary. That was the one which gave UCLA a chance to tie it. Now at 26-24, without having called a timeout, they elected to go with the running play. Gaston Green behind the offensive line that blew BYU off the ball last week, getting into the end zone, and that tied it at 26. Penn State barely escaped against Temple, 27-25 was the final score in that game. Paul Palmer, the Temple tailback, had 206 yards in the game. Only Ted Brown, Tony Dorsett, and Alan Pinkett have ever run for more. Bino Cook, your prediction regarding the season for Penn State? Penn State will play for the national title on New Year's. I don't know whether we'll be in the Orange Bowl or the Sugar Bowl, but they will have a crack at number one again for Joe Paterno. You want to go so far as to say it'll be against either Oklahoma or Auburn? No, no, we do that later in the year. All right, so Bino Cook out on a limb saying that Penn State on New Year's Day will have a shot at the national title. LSU in its opener beat North Carolina at Chapel Hill 23-13, to and in an upset, Delaware playing Navy for the first time in 54 years, beat the midshipmen 16-13, to McCallum 27 for 153 yards. We'll be back with more right after. Rutgers did not get a chance to kick a game-winning field goal, so call it a Rutgers-Florida tie 28-28. The coaches, Galen Hall and Dick Anderson, were teammates years ago at Penn State. Maryland beat Boston College 31-13 today easily. Notre Dame fell to Michigan in their opener at Ann Arbor. Michigan winning 20-12 on a day in which Big Ten teams have gone 6-0 with two more games to be played tonight. Indiana snapped its 16-game losing streak. Now the nation's longest losing streak belongs to Rice at 10 in a row, and we will be back next week with more from college football today and throughout the rest of our college football day. Thank you. College football scoreboard. This has been an ABC Sports presentation recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.